Since it's Mother's Day, that means I get to tell Reed stories, right? <laughs> so, how many of you have a little person that sang all the time? Like from the moment he learned how to speak, we were singing. Like, we sang everything all the time, everywhere. There was one trip from my mom's house here all the way to Connecticut where I had to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. 18 hours worth of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. But he would make up stories and songs, so as he went about his day playing, he would have these elaborate songs that were occurring. Then it migrated to bathroom songs, right? In the tub and in the shower. Songs were an important part of his life. Music has always been an important part of my life. It has been one of the ways I tap into the holy, that I connect with God and the mystery that is, that guides me and helps me figure out things. Like when I pray to God with a question, an issue, a challenge, a concern, a worry, what usually comes back to me from the mystery that is, is a song lyric. And sometimes it'll be a song that I don't even know. Like, you know, so my brain wouldn't naturally go there because it's not one that I sing on my own. But the song comes into my mind and helps me either, you know, figure out what my next role is in whatever it was I was praying about. In this psalm, Psalm 98, we get this image of a God, a God, the mystery that is, has brought the people through something. We don't know what, right? What it says is vindication and retribution and victory. We don't know what any of those could be, right? It could be anything from um, surviving exile in Babylon to surviving any of the waves of conquest that came through the region. We don't know what the victory was. We just know that that has happened, that God has led to this victory. And so then they begin singing. They begin singing with first Israel is invited to sing praises in wonder to God, right? And then it expands. So the first layer is Israel. Then it becomes every human everywhere sing praise to God. And then it becomes all of creation. Everything, inanimate and animate, sing to God. So animals and trees, birds, mountains, oceans, sing to God. As I was thinking about this scripture, I had a whole bunch of mixed feelings, right? Because it's asking us to break forth into song. And yet, if you watched the news yesterday, your heart just broke. Because they show pictures of India, and you're like, oh my God, it's getting worse and worse. It's moving from the cities to where 77% of the population lives in the country. There isn't anything to sing about. Or, you saw the news that Israel is totally trying to take over a Palestinian neighborhood and is killing and hurting the protesters who are trying to keep them out of their neighborhood, okay? Like, the area has been divided. This is Israel's spot, this is Palestine's spot. And Israel's decided they want that neighborhood in Jerusalem and have come in to take it over. And the pain, right? The pain of people who are just trying to save their home being met with tear gas, being met with beatings. How do we deal with that? How do we sing a song in the midst of that? And then you may not even have heard that in Colombia, 
They are rioting also right now because they're changing the tax structure and going to make it worse for every ordinary person. And they also are being met with violent government action against the protesters. How do you sing a song in the midst of that? Knowing that here in the United States, before September, we are going to have 40,000 more deaths by COVID. 40,000 more deaths. We are at the end, and all of us are getting really hopeful and ready to go out and do everything, right? And yet, think about that. We have killed the state of Wyoming, right? That's the number of people we have killed right now. And we have 40,000 more that is coming before September. How do we sing praise to God in the midst of that? How do we break out in new song and break forth into praise for God? Knowing that there is so much pain and grief still happening right now. And I don't know that I have a good answer to this question. Because part of us needs to sing and dance right now because it has been a hard year, right? It has been hard, and when we can take those moments where we can experience what is good, what makes us feel good, it helps us to continue on in the hardness of what is happening. And then there's the bonuses, right? All that singing that Reed and I did when he was little, it means I get to live longer, right? Because we join chorus and sing in choirs, and that meant your age gets longer because your life is happier and more full. So Susan and Pat right now are just in angst because not only are we not singing in church, but they can't even sing in their fun, big, huge choir with all the voices. So how do I tell you to sing a new song when I, in the same breath, I have to tell you, but not here, not now, not yet. How do we sing a new song when it's not possible right at the moment? Because the studies have shown that we can have soloists. So if Donna wants to volunteer for us to sing, we can have song. <laughs> but we can't have choir song that I know you've seen choirs singing together, but they've shown that this drop spread, even when you're massed as a choir, 20 feet. And so if you don't know if everybody's been vaccinated, you have to put 20 feet between you and the crowd with no breeze, or outside. So we can all move worship outside to sing together, but we can't sing together in here. And yet singing together in here in churches is one of the few places where people still sing. Everywhere else, we have become a country where we look at American Idol and The Voice and all those singing competitions and go, well, I don't sing anywhere near as good as that, so I can't sing. So we don't sing. And yet churches are one of the few places where people don't think so much about how they sound because they know that there's going to be more voices and there'll be good voices that can cover them up and so they can sing together. And yet today all we can hear is the bird which built a nest right over there, so that's why it's really loud. So how do we sing a new song to God and sing praise when the world feels so anxious? So upsetting. And maybe why they put this scripture here in the Easter season is because it isn't necessarily about now, this immediate moment. It's about teaching us that we are allowed to sing when the new breaks through. When God breaks through in those moments when you need them. I mean, so how many of you are mothers 
And when you're holding that little baby, or now all of you are getting the grandbabies, the first thing you start to do is sing the song, right? Either the one their mother taught you or the one you sang to their kids, because you can't help but want to soothe them and connect with them. And your singing voice is something that they hear better even than your speaking voice. It's about that breaking forth into something new. That we take those moments, those pieces of time where something good happens. Like I imagine when Christina and Hunter were practicing that, there were a lot of stops and breaks and giggles, right? I have all the bloopers. <laughs> because somebody looked at somebody wrong and it just, sent them off into peals of laughter. And yet some of the words in there were about breaking into something new, right? Breaking forth into something new, allowing God to break into these moments that when we turn on the news and we see Israel and we see India and we see Colombia and we see COVID deaths in the United States, we know that this isn't the final answer, the complete story. That God tells us that the new will break forth and break in. In fact, one of the passages that I learned about this week when I was researching singing in the Bible was, did you know God sings to us too? That in, because we don't go here very often, in Zephaniah, I think it appears once in the lectionary, and it's like, I think, at Christmas time, and it's not this passage. In Zephaniah, it says, The Lord your God is in your midst. God will rejoice with gladness. God will renew you in his love. I can't even read my own writing, right? God will exalt over you in loud singing. That we could extend our psalm that goes from Israel to everyone to creation to the creator of all, being someone who sings over us. And that's the hope we have. That God looks at us and wants to sing over us and with us and renew us with love even when we are doing horrible things to each other. That God wants to come into that horribleness and show you a new and a better way to break through the noise, to break through the violence, to break through the unkindness and bring love, to bring the new, to bring praise to God. Amen.